Beta blockers are competitively inhibit beta receptor beta 1 as well as beta 2 adrenergic receptor and prototype drug is propranolol. So this is the classification of the beta adrenergic blocking agents. So first is the non-selective and another one is the cardioselective. So non-selective drug block the beta 1 as well as beta 2 receptor. So first group is the without intrinsic synthetomimetic activities are Propranolol, Sotalol, Antimolol and with intensive activities are Pindolol. Second, third group is with alpha blocking property. Beta blocker as well as alpha blocking pro properties are Labetalol and Carvetalol. Cardioselective drug which only inhibit beta 1 receptor are Metoprolol, Atenolol, Acetolol, Bisoprolol, Asmolol, Bitoxolol, Caliprolol and Nepivolol. This is these are the drugs which inhibit the beta 1 receptor. So it is cardioselective drugs. Now to generation wise classification of the beta blockers are first generation, second generation and third generation. In first generation uh, drugs are non-selective are propanolol, timolol, sotalol and pindolol. And a second group beta 1 only cardioselective drug metoprolol, atenolol, acetolol, bisoprolol and esomolol. Third group is non-selective like it also block the alpha receptors too. So it is uh, labetolol, carvedilol, caliprolol, nebivolol and betoxolol. The pharmacological action of the beta blockers are effect of beta blocker on the heart it blocks the beta 1 receptor, causes decrease the heart rate and force of conduction. So, at higher doses also reduces the cardiac output. So, decreased cardiac work and oxygen consumption benefit in the angina. So, it is uh, reduces prolong the systole by the retarding the conduction. So, that synergy of the contraction of the ventricle fiber is disturbed. The effect in the normal resting heart is mild but become prominent under sympathetic overactivity. Ventricular dimension are decrease in normal subject but dilatation are occur in more uh, with re reduced reserve like CHF patient. So it's uh, precipitated CHF and aggravated uh, precipitated CHF and aggravated cardiac condition. Effect of beta blocker on the blood pressure. In acute change beta blocker block the vasodilatation effect at the periphery. So initially increase the total peripheral resistance but on chronic administration of the beta blocker it reduces the cardiac output and decrease the peripheral resistance. Little change in blood pressure with continued use of the beta blocker resistance vessel become gradually adapted and decrease systolic and diastolic blood pressure and fall in blood pressure due to antihypertensive effect of the beta blocker. Now, beta blocker as antihypertensive drug, there are various mechanisms to fall in blood pressure in hypertensive patients. So, first of all, it inhibits the beta 1 receptor causes reduced heart rate, force of contraction, and cardiac output. Second is the on blood vessel initial phase uh, decreases the total peripheral resistance due to beta block, beta 2 receptor blocking. But indirect action through decrease the cardiac output and this blood vessel adapt to lower cardiac output. So it increases the uh, decreases the total peripheral resistance. The kidney decreases the renin release through beta 1 receptor blocking. So uh, in those patients who is having higher renin uh, peripheral higher renin release is fall uh, in blood pressure in those patients more. And fourth mechanism is sympathetic nerve ending, decrease sympathetic transmission at the nerve ending at the by the blocking beta receptor mediated facility of release release process. And fourth one is the central action decreases the central flow, central sympathetic outflow, so reduces the blood pressure. So these are the mechanism to reduce the total peripheral resistance and decrease the blood pressure. Effect of beta blocker on the respiratory tract. It inhibits uh, beta blocker dilatation of the 
from first by beta 2 receptor antagonist in precipitate attack of the bronchial asthma. So it is contraindicated uh, COPD as well as asthma. Effect on the uterus relaxation due to agonist do not affect normal urine activity. In I, uh, beta blocker causes reduce aqueous humor production and decrease intraocular pressure, not effect on the size of the pill. Effect on the muscle, skeletal muscle, it inhibits adrenergic provoked tremor, direct action on the muscle by fiber or by uh, beta 2 action. It reduces exercise capacity as blood flow reduces and metabolic action it is increases plasma free fatty acid triglyceride low uh, ldl and hdl ratio uh, glycogenolysis is inhibited from liver no effect on the normal blood sugar level but postpone recovery from insulin hypoglycemia impaired carbohydrate tolerance can occur ECNS effect only at long term high doses, forgetfulness, increased dreaming and nightmares can occur due to beta blocker and suppresses anxiety in short term stress situation due to peripheral action. And local anesthetic action is the potential local anesthetic action but irritant and not suitable for the use as a local anesthetic action. Pharmacokinetic of propranolol is it is well absorbed after oral, oral administration, but its bioavailability is low due to its high phosphorus metabolism. It penetrates brain easily, and metabolic uh, metabolism of propranolol is depend on the high apatic blood flow. Chronic use of propranolol itself decreases hepatic meta um, blood flow, and its on oral bioavailability is increased and it it's prolonged the half life bioavailability of propranolol is higher when it is taken with milk because food decreases its first pass metabolism and increase the bioavailability interactions with beta blockers are digitalis and verapamil both reduces the SA node and AV node depression and also beta blocker causes uh, decrease the heart rate and force of contraction so simultaneously digitalis as well as beta blocker plus beta blocker can cause cardiac arrest occur so it should be should be avoided simultaneously Propranolol has been safely used with nifedipine as nifedipine causes tachycardia and beta blocker causes pericardia. So this is the um, nullified the effect of each other. Propranolol delay recovery from hypoglycemia due to insulin and oral anti-diabetic drug. Warning sign of the hypoglycemia mediated through sympathetic stimulation like tachycardia tremor are suppressed by beta blocker. So it should be used cautiously in diabetic pressure. Sympathomimetic drugs like the phenylephrine, epidrine and alpha agonistase all drug causes mark rise in beta blocker, mark rise in blood pressure and simultaneously even then due to beta blocker it blockages the beta 2 receptor and causes vasodilator effect of the, beta, uh, of the blood vessel will uh, reduces so marked rise in blood pressure. Endomethacin and NSAIDs attenuate antihypertension action of the drug. And propranolol retard lidocaine metabolism by reducing hepatic flow. Now, adverse drug reaction of the beta blocker on the heart. First is the bradycardia is most common and more with the cardio selective drug because it inhibits the beta 1 receptor and reduces the um, heart rate and patient of the six sinus are more, more prone to severe pericardia and contraindicated in the partial heart flow accentuate myocardial insufficiency and can, uh, insufficiency and can precipitate CHF edema by uh, blocking of sympathetic uh, support of the to the heart especially 
during the cardiovascular stress. And third one is the exacerbation of the variant angina due to unopposed alpha mediated coronary constriction. So these are the adverse drug reaction of the beta blocker on heart. Now on the lung, in the condition uh, of the COPD, it worsening the condition of the COPD and precipitate asthma. So beta 2 receptor are present on the lung and so it is inhibited. So it precipitates the bronchial asthma, so contraindicated in the bronchial asthma, less with the cardioselective beta blocker. Metabolic adverse effects on chronic use are impaired carbohydrate intolerance in pediatric patients and mask the hypoglycemic symptoms of insulin in diabetic patients by the beta blocker and it alters lipid profile, increases triglyceride level and decreases high density lipoprotein cholesterol. Less with beta 1 selective blocker and those with intrinsic sympathomimetic activity. Now, withdrawal symptom on chronic is if a patient is taking um, beta blocker for long time, it should be tapered or should reduce the dose to avoid rebound hypertension or worsening of angina due to upgradation of the beta receptor due to constant block. So, gradual withdrawal should be after chronic use. Hardiness and reduces exercise capacity due to blunting of beta 2 mediated increase in blood flow to exercise muscle as well as attenuate glycogenolysis and lipolysis can occur. And due to cold hand and feet, blockage of beta 2 receptor portion in peripheral diseases. Side effect not overtly due to beta blockage are GI upset. Lack of drive, nightmares, forgetfulness, high incidence of depression, and sexual distress. Some beta blocker have been developed having some special feature like uh, cardioselectivity to beta 1 receptor. Like uh, some drugs are bind with the beta 1 receptor and block the beta 1 receptor. Drugs are metoprolol, atenolol, bisoprolol, acetolol, and nebivolol. Second is the partial agonistic action. Some drug having antagonists as well as partial agonistic activity at the beta 1 as well as beta 2 receptors are pendolol, acetolol, and pelitolol. Third is the membrane stabilizing activity. So some drug having membrane stabilizing activity and they can use in the arrhythmia. Propanolol, acetolol, oxidopenolol. These are the drugs which cause which inhibit the rhythm of the heart. So low lipid solubility. Some drugs is, uh, are not able to penetrate CNS and CNS. So CNS side effects are less. So atinolol, bisoprolol, pelitolol, and sotanol. These all are drugs which are not uh, penetrating blood brain barrier. So it has better less. Cardioselective beta blockers, which blocks only beta 1 receptor and beta 2 receptor side effect are free from the adverse drug reaction. So, less exacerbation of COPD and asthma and less impairment of sugar and lipid. Less vascular side effects. So, it is safe in asthmatic patient, diabetic patient and uh, peripheral vascular disease patient. It is ineffective for suppressing essential tremor and less chances of reduce in exercise capacity. Now, partial agonist action of the beta blocker with intrinsic sympathomimetic activity like pendolol, acetolol, and calitrolol. These are uh, beta blocker but having partial agonistic action at the receptor. So, it activates beta receptor submaximally and it is controversial outcome less bradycardia, exercise induced tachycardia, less withdrawal, and less likely to exacerbation of the hypertension and angina. Less worsening of plasma lipid profile and no effective in migraine prophylaxis as well as not suitable for secondary prophylaxis of myocardial infarction. Now, low lipid solubility beta blockers are atenolol, caliprolol, bisoprolol, and sotalol. These all drugs are low lipid soluble, so penetration to the blood brain barrier is less and less side effect. And different pharmacokinetic, it is longer acting, longer half life effective in narrow range.
and other group is the membrane stabilizing activity drugs like propranolol acetolol and oxytolol these all drugs are mem uh, having membrane stabilizing activity so contribute to the anti arrhythmic action but appear to be insignificant clinical cannot be used topical for glaucoma and because they anesthetize the cornea in this table shows differences between different group of the beta blockers so first group is the cardio selective beta blocker so b1 receptors are blocked by metoprolol atenolol acetolol bisoprolol and nebulol so short form is the manba less bronchoconstriction less sugar cholesterol and lipid profile disturbance and it can be used in peripheral vascular diseases due to less uh, vasoconstriction impaired exercise capacity capacity and less effective for the uh, tumor so these are the all benefits of the beta one receptor selective cardio selective beta blocker second group is the partial agonistic activity pendolol acetolol and galitrolol these drug are the beta blocker but it also sub maximally activate the beta 1 and beta 2 receptor so less card uh, bradycardia and less withdrawal symptom can appear and lipid profile um, less altered in the lipid profile not effective and secondary myocardial infarction as well as migraine prophylaxis membrane stabilizing property drugs like propranolol acetolol and oxytocin these drug are uh, only membrane stabilizing property having membrane stabilizing property at higher doses never use in glaucoma fourth group is lipid insolubility atenolol bisoprolol galitrolol and sotalol these all drug are low lipid soluble so it is not penetrating blood brain barrier and less serious side effects now therapeutic uses of the beta blocker cardiovascular and non cardiovascular uses of the beta blocker therapeutic uses of the beta blocker are cardiovascular and non cardiovascular so first of all cardio cardiovascular are hypertension angina myocardial infarction arrhythmia congestive heart failure cardiomyopathy dissecting aneurysm of the aorta and non cardiovascular uses are thyrotoxicosis pyochromocytoma migraine prophylaxis essential tremor glaucoma anxiety partial hypertension and antipsychotic induced akathisia cardiovascular uses in hypertension beta blocker are useful in all grade of the hypertension these drug are preferred especially in patient with the angina and myocardial infarction and cardiac arrhythmia the benefit of beta blockers are it sodium and water risk retention is rare it is cheaper and have long duration of action and well tolerated second is the in use in cardiac use of the beta blocker in angina pectoris it is useful in angina for prophylaxis and myocardial infarction it reduces myocardial oxygen demand by decreasing heart rate myocardial contractility and atrial pressure it also improve exercise tolerance and reduce frequency of the attack in myocardial infarction myocardial salvage during the evaluation of the mi intravenous administration within 4 to 6 hour of mi followed by oral use it um, in acute phase of the mi may limit in infarcite and long term use of the beta blocker may reduces mortality and reinforcement and it uh, may prevent arrhythmia it is used as secondary prophylaxis for myocardial infarction it decreases mortality by 20% high risk patient two year it prevent reinfarction and sudden ventricular fibrillation at subsequent attack of mi beta blocker with sympathetic intrinsic sympathetic activity it is not suitable so beta blocker should be given to only those patient who not in shock or cardiac failure who uh, have heart rate uh, more than 50 min per minute first degree heart block use of beta blocker in congestive heart failure on long term mild to moderate chf retard progression of the 
CHF and the long term life. Long term beneficial hemodynamic effect with the metoprolol, bisoprolol, nebulol, and carvedilol. The exit mechanism of action is not known, but it block the beta receptor mediated effect of the catecholamine on the heart, which improve the left ventricular structure and function, decrease wall stress, increase ejection fraction, and decrease left ventricular size. They decrease apoptosis and ventricular remodeling. They also decreases frequency of arrhythmia. So beta blocker should not be given to those patients with marked fluid retention. Now use of beta blocker in cardiac arrhythmias. So it is used in atrial flutter, atrial fibrillation, and paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. But it is rarely used in ventricular arrhythmia. Another use is in dissecting aortic aneurysm, help by reducing uh, cardiac contractile force and aortic pulsation. Now, known cardiovascular uses of beta blockers are like migraine. Migraine, propranolol and metoprolol are effective in reducing frequency of the migraine headache. The mechanism is not known, but in acute condition, it is not used. In uh, for in anxiety, reduces nervousness and panic-related attacks or unaccustomed public appearance related to anxiety and block peripheral manifestation of anxiety like tremor, sweating, and palpitation. Non-selective beta blocker like propranolol can be used in patient cell tremor and thyrotoxicosis to relieve symptomatic control like tremor, tachycardia, palpitation, severe myopathy without affecting thyroid status. It also inhibits peripheral conversion of T4 to T3, valuable in thyroid storm. And it is also used in preoperatively while awaiting response of the antithyroid drug. Use of beta blocker in pheochromocytoma. Pheochromocytoma is the tumor of adrenal gland and releases excess amount of the catecholamine, causes hypertension, tachycardia, arrhythmia can occur. So, first stage drug is the alpha blocker, should be given. Otherwise, dangerous size in blood pressure and beta blocker control the tachycardia and arrhythmia. Use of beta blocker in glaucoma, it is first line drug and produces less side effect. It can be used topically and imolol, vitoxolol and dipobutolol are used in chronic open angle glaucoma. It reduces intraocular pressure by decreases aqueous humor formation by acting on beta receptors. Individual beta blockers like uh, sotalol is the additional cardiac uh, potassium channel blocking agent and class 3 antiarrhythmic property. Timolol is the good lipid solubility and absence of local anesthetic property. So it is the first choice drug for the glaucoma, topical application in glaucoma. Pindolol with sympatho, um, intensing uh, sympathomimetic activity. So patient on the propranolol and having bradycardia, so uh, pindolol can be given and metoprolol it is the prototype drug for the cardio selective beta 1 blocker less likely to worsen asthma diabetes and peripheral vascular diseases first pass metabolism of metoprolol is less marked than the propranolol but 90 percent side effect of metoprolol are milder and it is generally given orally for hypertension angina and cardio uh, congestive heart failure Adrenal have low lipid solubility, longer duration of action. OD, most commonly used beta blocker in hypertension and angina. Acetylol with partial agonistic activity, membrane stabilizing activity and can be used OD. Bisoprolol, it is also used OD in angina, hypertension and congestive heart failure. Esmolol is ultra short acting only 10 minutes and it is used in emergency condition terminate supraventricular tachycardia during anesthesia and reduce heart rate blood pressure during and after cardiac surgery early treatment of myocardial infarction now alpha and beta adrenergic blockers are labetolol and carvedilol beta 1 and beta 2 plus alpha blocking agents and weak beta 2 blocking property fall in blood pressure systolic as well as diastolic SD2 alpha 1 and beta 1 blocked as well as beta 2 agoristic vasodilatation can occur. High doses reduces both cardiac output, total peripheral resistance, heart rate, 
is unchanged or slightly decreased or increased. Levetolol is orally effective but undergoes considerable first pass metabolism. Now, uses of non selective beta blockers are moderate and moderately potent hypertensive, useful in pheochromocytoma, clonid in vitro, pregnancy induced hypertension, hypertensive emergency, essential hypertension. These all are uses of non selective beta blocker. And side effects are postural hypotension due to blockage of the alpha 2 receptor, failure of ejaculation, and rashes and liver damage have been reported. Carvedinone, it is beta 1, beta 2 and alpha 1 adenine receptor blocker plus calcium genome blockade and antioxidant property. So it is useful in hypertension uh, and cardioprotective and CHF. Also oral availability is car uh, carvedinone is 30% and is primarily metabolized by CYP2D6 enzyme. Thank you for watching the video.